Hi guys, I'm Diana and I'm a product manager at a big tech company in Silicon Valley, California. And I bring you the best tips to help you get into product management and teach you how to succeed once you've made it. If you're interviewing for a product manager role soon, you're probably gonna get a debugging question. What's a debugging question you ask? Here are some example questions from actual interviews. You're the PM for our dating product and users have dropped by 10%. What would you do? How would you diagnose a 15% decline in user engagement? Or events usage has dropped by 20% overnight. What would you do as the product manager? These are actual situations that us as product managers are put into on a weekly basis. Hence why interviewers like to ask this question. The goal, as I've said in past interviews, is the interviewer wants to understand how you think. It's not to get the exact answer, but to understand A, how you think logically and structurally, B, that you know how to use data, and C, that you can come up with hypotheses that are data-driven. So today, I'm going to show you what 80% of candidates answer when given this question, and then I'm going to show you what 20% of the best candidates say when given this type of question. So let's get started. This is what 80% of candidates say when given this type of question. So say you're the PM for the events product. We notice our metrics drop by 10%. How would you figure out what happened? All right, I have some clarifying questions. Is this in a specific country or is this global? And was there a major holiday that happened? Mm, this was global and no major holiday as I know. Okay, no major holidays. Okay, this is how I want to approach it. I want to think through internal and external factors that might be causing this 10% drop. So let's start with external factors. Has something happened with competitors? Did they launch something? And what about PR? Have we seen the news talking about our product negatively? No, we haven't had any negative PR scandals in the news. And with competition, I'm not sure, but that's for you to figure out. Okay, I see. So maybe not external factors, but let's look at internal factors. Have we shipped any products recently that might have impacted this? Maybe we should check if there's a bug in the code and that could be causing the decline in numbers. We launch features every week. So yes, where would you go now? You might have noticed that felt like a weak response. Not because it was wrong, it felt like the interviewee was guessing off of a checklist. And we're not looking to hire product managers that are just going through a checklist. We actually want them to think. Now that we've gotten a weak answer out of the way, let's talk about what a great answer looks like. So as always, you know me, I'm going to start with a framework. Here's a framework on how to tackle this question in a logical, structured, and data-driven approach. And this is actually how I think as a product manager in my day-to-day -day work. So let's start with the structure. Number one, you want to understand the product and this metric in relation to this product. Number two, you want to break down this metric to understand what's affecting it and what it may affect. Three, this is where you want to start asking for data as you would if you were a product manager working with a data scientist or a data analyst. Number four, based off of the data, you want to brainstorm some data-driven hypotheses that could be causing this decline. And number five, you want to figure out based off of these hypotheses, how would you actually go about validating or invalidating these hypotheses? So now let's dive into an actual question so I can show you how this framework can be used. The question we're gonna go through today 
is how would you figure out what caused a 15% drop in user engagement on Instagram? So before you dive into any question, always feel free to ask clarifying questions. In this specific one, I would ask the interviewer, was this 15% drop a drastic drop or one that happened over time? Let's say the interviewer told us this happened drastically over the last two weeks. Now let's use the framework we just talked about to get towards some hypotheses. So the first part of our framework is understanding the product. And this is key because you want to understand how this product is bringing value and where this metric falls in the big picture of the product. In this case, Instagram is a social media product that allows your friends, content creators, influencers to share photos, videos, products so that other users can engage with it. People engage with this type of content by liking it, commenting, resharing, buying. This part is important because you want to make sure that your understanding of the product is aligned with how the interviewer understands it so that you're not making any assumptions that will get you stuck later down the road. Second, now you want to understand the metric. In this question, the interviewer told you that engagement went down by 15%. But what does engagement mean? That's not a metric. So in this case, let's break down what engagement could mean. When we talk about Instagram, how do people engage? Users can be broken up into two kinds, the content creators slash producers and the viewers. Of course, one person can be doing both, but let's simplistically break it down like that. A simplistic representation of the content creators side is they post and they reshare. Now, what type of content can they post? They can post a normal photo post, a video, nowadays a reel, which is like short form TikTok type of content that launched this year. Now let's move over to the viewer side. How can viewers engage with a post from a producer? They can like it, denoted by the heart, comment, reshare it with friends. They can buy something if it's a product post or they can send a DM, a direct message to the poster. So those are just some high level ways how we define engagement on the Instagram platform. And this takes us to the third part, asking for data to investigate. So we just talked about a couple ways you can engage on the platform. And now my first question is number one, is this drop in engagement coming from a specific type of engager? Was it the content creator where we're seeing a drop in the engagement or was it the user side? Or was it the viewer side who are not at engaging with the post as often? Let's assume our interviewer told us when we talk about engagement, we're talking about engagement with a post. So in this case, I'm then asking, are there specific types of engagements that are dropping? For example, maybe we're seeing a reduction in likes or maybe a reduction in comments. Which of the five that we named is actually seeing the reduction or maybe it's all of them. But this is the type of data you want to understand to help you then narrow down what might be causing this problem. And yes, here is also where you want to understand segmentation of, let's say, countries. Is this happening in just one market or is this happening across all markets? So this is a stage where you'd be digging for data and asking the right questions to help you propose some hypotheses of what could be the problem. Let's say the interviewer gave us some information that the decrease in engagement of 15% were being contributed by a reduction in the total number of posts, which went down by 15%. So with that piece of information, I'm asking myself, 
Was there a drop in the total number of content creators maybe leading to this? Or maybe there was a drop in the production by the top content creators contribute to an enormous share of the total content produced. Perhaps there was friction in the content creation flow, whether in the entry point was misplaced or there was a bug. For example, a couple months ago when Reels came out, Instagram decided to replace the Create Post button with the Reels button, which probably led to regular photo posts creation for being severely reduced. The interviewer didn't tell us whether this was country specific, but if it was, we can imagine depending on the country, the issue could range from an internet shutdown from particular countries to maybe a national event. These are just some hypotheses. And what's most important is that your hypotheses are data driven and not randomly selected. That's the difference between 80% of candidates who will randomly guess versus the 20% who will ask for data up front and then present some logical hypotheses to follow the data. Step number five. You want to figure out how you would validate or invalidate your hypotheses. So what would you tactically do? In this case, I might check the trend of content creators over the last few months and see when the drop happened exactly. I might also test if there's been any changes in the creation flow by playing around and dog fooding it myself and to rule out any country specific changes, I'd work with our country managers to check if there's been some large national event that's happened across certain regions or countries. I hope you were able to see the difference between the 80% of candidates versus the best 20% and how they answer these type of questions. What next? Go try out some debugging questions using this framework and see if it actually helps you think more logically and structurally and try it with people that you're mock interviewing with. If you've got follow-up questions, make sure to comment below and also like and subscribe to let me know you want more videos like this. Thanks guys.